Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to introduce the mixed strategy algorithm. Last time we explored the game Matching Pennies, which had a payoff matrix that looked like this. We logically concluded that the equilibrium strategy for this game would be to flip the coin, thus completely confusing your opponent and securing a payoff of zero on average. But the solution isn't so simple for most games requiring a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Take, for instance, this game. It is still a zero-sum game, just like Matching Pennies. And it's also still a coordination game. Player 1 wants to coordinate with his opponent's choice, while player 2 wants to ensure discoordination. But in Matching Pennies, player 1 didn't care if you won using heads or tails. It was the same payoff. But now, player 1 prefers matching on heads. You'll get 3 points for doing so, whereas he only breaks even on matching on tails. So it seems like he'll probably want to play heads more often than he does tails. But player 2 really wants to avoid playing heads, so she might want to play tails more often. But if player 1 knows 2 is going to be playing tails more often, he might want to play tails more frequently than heads. In turn, to avoid that situation, player 2 might want to begin playing heads more frequently. This is just creating a giant mess, as it isn't exactly clear what the mixed strategy equilibrium is going to be. That's why we have the mixed strategy algorithm. Let's review the ground rules first. If no equilibrium exists in pure strategies, then one must exist in mixed strategies. And if the game is a 2x2 two two matrix as it is here, each player's mixed strategy must make the other player indifferent between his two pure strategies. In other words, a mixed strategy must make the utility of playing one pure strategy equal to the utility of playing the other pure strategy. And if a mixed strategy exists in a game, then some probability distribution must fulfill this requirement for it to be in equilibrium. We will call this assumed mixed strategy a sigma. Now, given a sigma for a player, we can calculate each of the other players' util each of the other players' pure strategies' payoffs as a function of sigma. And we will call these expected utilities u of x, where x is the name of the particular strategy. So how does this relate to the game that we're talking about? Well, let's reintroduce the matrix. And note that I've replaced heads and tails with up and down, and left and right, so we can better differentiate between the player strategies. Now player 1 is playing up or down, and player 2 is choosing between left or right. Let's begin by solving for player 1's mixed strategy. For player 1 to be willing to mix, some sigma has to exist such that player 2's utility for playing left equals her utility for playing right. We've also established that each of these utilities is a function of sigma. Notice that we have three unknowns here, u of l, u of r, and sigma. We also have three equations. If you've taken much algebra, then you should know that we can solve for each of these things as a result. The only obstacle standing in our way is fully writing out u of l and u of r as a function of sigma. Let's start with u of l. Suppose that player 2 is definitely playing left, and player 1 is mixing. What is player 2's, utilities, ut what is player two's utility for the situation as a function of sigma? Well, some percentage of the time, player 2 will get negative 3, and the rest of the time she'll get 1. Conveniently, we can rewrite these words like this. u of l equals sigma of u times negative 3 plus 1 minus sigma of u times 1. Let's be explicitly clear where all this came from. Sigma of u is the assumed probability player 1 will play up. That's what we're going to solve for. The negative 3 is player 2's payoff when she is playing left and player 1 is playing up. We know that negative 3 should be here because we're trying to solve for the utility of player 2 playing left, and we just wrote down the probability of playing up. So you have up and left right there converging to give us negative 3. That logically generates the payoff in the top left part of the matrix. Now, we have to do the same thing for down and left. What is the probability player 1 is going to play down? Well, he has to either play up or down, so he'll play down whenever he wants to play up. Thus, it's 1 minus the probability that he'll play up, or 1 minus sigma up. If it's unclear why we stuck a random 1 there, think of 1 as 100% and the sigma as some percent between 0 and 100. As it turns out, it is mathematically easier to eliminate the percentages and just stick a 1 in decimals or fractions. That's what we've done here. Finally, the 1 alone in its own parentheses comes from player 2's payoff for down and left. Again, that's just logically following from the fact that we're looking at player 2 playing left and player 1's pr uh, probability that he's playing down. So you get down and left right there, which generates the 1. Hopefully we are good here. We'll come back to that equation in a second. For now, we have to deal with u of r. And we're going to be doing the same thing as we just did before. It's the same idea here, except we've replaced player 2's strategy with right instead of left, and we put the corresponding payoffs, which were 2 and 0. Okay, we are back to looking at three equations. I should note here that we don't really care what the utilities are right now. 
all we are looking for is the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, which we can find by solving for sigma. And note that we can eliminate all of the u's by substituting the functions of sigma into the first equation, which looks like this. Now we have one equation with one unknown variable, so we can solve for it quite easily. And I've done all the algebra here for you already to show you that player one's mixed strategy is going to play up one-sixth of the time and to play down five-sixths of the time. Now we switch things up by looking for player two's mixed strategy, which must make player one indifferent between his two choices. So using that same algorithm and solving for player one's utility of playing up as some function of some mixed strategy of player two's yields that equation. Now we do the same thing except player 1 is now playing down for the utility of down. And again, I've done all the algebra already for you to show that player 2's mixed strategy, mixed strategy is to play left one-third of the time and to play right two-thirds of the time. We can write out this mixed strategy equilibrium like that. And that's all we have to do for this game. We've actually solved it, just like that. Now, mixed strategies will trip up a lot of players the first time they see them, especially since humans don't go around carrying randomizing devices, as these equilibria would suggest that we do. But if you don't understand them now, that's fine. In the next two videos, I'll be introducing a couple more basic games that require the use of mixed strategies to solve. Hopefully by that point, you'll have a firm grasp of what they attempt to do. See you then.